Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I wanna show you two different things. The first is how to add recipes and make sure we're getting good stuff saved in our server and in our database. So right now we're able to put anything, like we can uh, do an empty, submit an empty form. Uh, we can also pass in through Postman uh, garbage JSON data and it'll our server will accept it. Um, and it'll kind of mess up our application. So if we go to Postman real quick, we can see that if I post just this crappy old Bob object, which is definitely not a recipe, we can just post it to our server. We send it. Oh look, it takes it and creates a JSON object out of it and saves it in the database. But we don't want that at all, because that, that's not a recipe. If we go back, you notice now we have this blank card because Bob is saved in the database. So we want to throw an error in our back end when someone tries to give us bad JSON data. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to keep track of in our back end when a user submits a recipe and save the, um, their ID as in one of the fields of the recipe. That way this allows us later to search for a recipe um, that a user has made. So let's go ahead and go to the back end. Um, so I have the backend folder up, and this is, uh, I'm just going to be installing AJV, which is what we're going to be using to validate our JSON that's coming in. Um, we want to look a specific way to match a recipe, and AJV will verify that for us. So I reinstalled this, so I'm good. I'm not going to run it, but make sure to run this before doing this. And then I'm just going to open up um, the services recipe and then hooks, and then process. And then I'm just going to do const AJV require AJV. And then I'm going to create an AJV object. And now here comes our schema. I'm just going to paste it in here. Now, how I got this schema is I just took what I wanted the JSON to look like and I pasted this into an online um, editor. If you just Google JSON schema converter, um, it was able to take the JSON I had and make this little schema for me. And this will verify our JSON. So if the JSON does not fit this schema, it'll throw an error when we try to validate it. Um, so this makes sure it's proper. So we're gonna do that down here in our hook function. But first, before we hook, we want to make sure to compile this so it runs fast. Validate is equal to adv.compile. We don't want to run this every time. We don't want to compile the schema every time someone posts JSON because we already know what the schema is. We can just do it once. And inside this function here, we can check if what they passed is valid JSON. So we'll validate. Um, passing in the hook.data. And if it's not valid, we're going to throw an error. So throw new error. Invalid JSON. Okay. So now we're awesome. We can actually restart our server. So I'm going to go back to this tab that I have open for the server. I'm going to restart it. And now I'm going to try posting some JSON to it. Some crappy JSON like Bob. And cool, we get invalid JSON. That's exactly what we want. Now, if I go back, let's try to add a proper recipe. So recipe one, let's just do Timo. We have ingredient one, ingredient two, and I am a description. So try submitting that. And here, sure enough, it posts it OK, and the database saves it. That's exactly what I want. That's awesome. So now we'll get to the second part, which I want to do is first, in the back end, verify and uh, authenticate users. So when they're creating a new recipe, making sure that the user is logged in um, for the back end as well, and also saving the users. So if we go back to our process, what we want to do is just save the user in the 
object as well. So the owner ID, which we'll get from one of the parameters is user, and we can save their ID. What this will allow us to do is, we now, for every recipe that we create, we save the user's ID into that recipe in the database. This will allow us to look up in our database all the recipes a specific uh, user has made, which we'll use in the next video. So get out of that and go to source, services, recipe, hooks, index. And now we're just going to, you can see we have our process hook that's happening when we create. Um, this is happening when we post a recipe. What we'd like to also do is do some authentication beforehand. This is what uh, we make sure a user is uh, logged in before creating a recipe in the back end. And then also, it just makes sure uh, to populate the hook with the user so we can get the user ID that the process function right here is going to use. So I'm going to do auth.verify token. We're just going to do auth.populate user. And then auth.restrict to authenticated. Restrict to authenticated. Very nice. So now let's add recipe, recipe2. And let's make sure, oh, and let's also save that, restart your server. <clears throat> now we're going to add this here and make sure this submits OK. And we're getting an error. Let's see what our error is. Authentic manager was called. Did you receive any components? Oh, it looks like I didn't start up. This looks like we have an error in our code real quick. Let's double check that. So I tried to start and it broke. Um, looks like restrict authenticate is not a function. Restrict to authenticated. There we go. Now let's restart the server. Okay, that's worked okay. Refresh over here, now try add recipe 2 again. Oh, it looks like component will receive props. Did you mean component will receive props? Oh, we just slipped the E and the I. So real quick, hop back over to the client and open up your components. Um, and then auth, this should be an E, there we go. This shouldn't affect anything, but let's make sure we have the right function. Okay. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and add recipe 2 and close the console now. Submit. Very nice. So we submit the recipe and it's there. Let's make sure there's no errors. Nice. And if we look at a recipe object now, we can see we have a new field, the owner. So we can use this. And if we go back to React, so this is just copy that. If we go back over to React and we'll look up recipe. And we look at our user, we see we have the same ID here. If I paste, oops, let's paste it in here. So notice this ID matches ID here. So what we can do is we can get the ID from our user object that we populate and then search all recipes of that user to display what the user recipes have added. So that's what we'll do in the next video. We'll make a new page where we can click on our username right here, and then it'll show us all the recipes that we have added. All right, thanks for watching, guys.